In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this phone zoom transition. Let's go. So this was a transition that I filmed that I was going to use in my latest cinematic video, but I didn't end up using it. But either way, I wanna show you how I made this anyway, because I shot the material and I wanna show you how to put it all together inside of After Effects. Now, the first thing you're going to need is some video clips. The first clip is you're gonna need a shot where the camera is basically pulling back out of the phone. So this can be a shot that's just basically something that starts like this with the camera up against the phone. And then as you pull the camera back, we kind of reveal the background. It doesn't really matter what action you do, but I guess the main thing is you wanna make sure that that camera gets in as close as you can to that phone and the phone is in focus and you just wanna roll it for a little while before you start pulling the camera back. So your second shot that you need is the shot in which you want to start in. So the location that you're starting in, which is for me, which is this forest, Alicia's standing here and what I wanted to do was basically start with the camera up near her face and then basically pull back. And that is going to basically be the video clip that's going to go on the phone. So when we line up these two, it's basically going to end up with this sort of seamless you know, effect of the camera pulling all the way back through the camera. But as long as your subject is basically standing there and you're moving the camera back at the same sort of rate that you're doing it, that you're pulling the camera back in the first clip, then you'll be absolutely fine. So I've got my clip here, which I'm gonna start with my first clip here, and I'm just gonna create an in and an out point, and then I can right click on that clip and also create a new composition from that. Now the next part is I then want to basically work out what that video clip that's gonna go in, because it's good just to lay this out now in the timeline. So I've created an in and out for this point, and I'm just gonna drag that underneath. So now we've got our two clips here laid out on top of each other. Now we're, the first thing that we need to do is basically remove that phone screen. Now to do this, we need to basically create two things. So firstly, we need to create a tracker, which we can use to track the second clip to that screen. And we also need to basically mask out the phone screen so that we can reveal the background. Now we're gonna do this all using the built-in mocker which is free to use, it's built in with After Effects, and you just come down to basically track with Boris FX Mocker. I can click Start Mocker and it's gonna automatically open this up. So to do the track, what we can do is I'm just gonna grab my spline tool here, and a really simple way is just to draw basically a shape which kind of goes around the outside here focusing just on the edges of my screen. So this is where we're kind of trying to get as you know detailed as we can of that edge track because we're just really interested in getting this track nice and clean. So once I've got that, I also want to add on perspective. I can also show the grid just to kind of help see what's going on here. And then I'm just going to start that track going forward. Now I'm watching that grid to see if it's moving. If it really starts moving around, then you'll need to stop, go back, readjust that track, but we're just trying to get as much as we can. Now it may fail here, which it's done, and that's okay because we're gonna cut it off at that point and we can manually fix that little bit up. Now once we've got that one, I can just rename this one to track, so that's good there. And I'm just gonna disable this cog icon. And now I want to create another spline here. I'm just gonna turn off this grid. And this is going to be the section we're gonna cut out of the screen. So I wanna create basically a line which kind of runs across something like this. And I can even just tidy up these corners here by dragging out on these points. Now this part I want to call screen mask. And this one, I want to turn off that cog and I want to, with that selector, come down here and make sure that this is linked to my tracker. Now, if I play through that, you can see that that basically cutout is stuck to that phone. Now, it does slip here at the end and that's okay. We can always come back here and refix this. Basically, once it gets down to that lower level, it'll be moving so quickly that the motion blur will kind of hide that part so we won't really see that. Now, I can just come up to file and save this and I'm just gonna close Mocker 
and then we're back in uh, Mocha AE. Now, if you're new here, I'm Ross, and this is Flatpak Effects, and I'm all about teaching you how to create better videos and video effects. As I mentioned, this was an effect that I originally was going to include in my cinematic video and as a part of my Travel Effects Pro course. And if you're interested in learning more about how to make cinematic videos, how to make video effects, and the whole process involved, then you can check out my Travel Effects Pro course. I'll link to that down in the description, and I'll run you through from start to finish how I actually made my video and all of the major effects seen in that video. Now, this video is also sponsored today by Envato Elements. And Envato Elements is a stock library of pretty much everything that you'll need as a content creator online. It's something I've personally now been using for the past year or so. And it's something that I use nearly every day. Now, the major things that I use are all the templates you can get for After Effects and Premiere, as well as other video editing programs. But because I'm stuck here in the studio most of the time, I don't always get to go out and film things. So the other great thing is their stock video library. I find I use it a lot when I need to put together videos or I just need filler for the videos that I've already filmed. The other useful little things here are these downloadable transition packs. So you can basically just find your favorite video editor, find some transitions. If you just want something just to quickly spice up your next project, you can just download and also incorporate them into your projects. The great thing about Envato Elements is that it's all included as part of one low monthly subscription and it's unlimited downloads. Now you can try Envato Elements for yourself for free for the next seven days. And if you like it, then if you use the special link down in the description below, that'll give you 50% off an annual subscription. Now what we can do, I can select visible layers and I can select that screen mask and then I can basically create AE mask from that. Now once I do that, it automatically is going to create a mask which sits over the top. I can always come down by hitting M to bring that up and just basically set that to be subtract. So that's got our cut out now on the screen and we're seeing that layer underneath if I just turn that off. The other thing we also want to do is create tracking data from that track that we had before. So that basically creates these tracking points on there that we can basically use to create our tracking data too. So what we need to do is if I create, say a new null object, I can call this one tracker. And with that layer selected again, I want to basically apply the corner pin with motion blur support to that tracker layer and apply the export. Now, if I just turn this off and just look at the tracker, you can see that we've got that tracking information applied to our scene. Now, what we want to do here is I've just bought the start of my clip in here because I want the screen to basically start about here. And with the background layer, I want that to apply to the tracker. So that's going to follow that tracker, which is our screen as it's moving through. Now, the next part is we now want to create that zoom. So we can do this by creating another null object, which sits over the top. I'm going to rename this one to be zoom. This one, I want to apply this top layer, which is the one with the phone to that zoom layer. Now, what we can do then is basically bring up the scale, create a keyframe, hit P and create a keyframe, hit U to bring up both of those keyframes. And now what we can do is create two more here. So we can basically now start to zoom in to our clip and we basically just want to try and basically want to try and zoom in here to kind of fill the edges of that screen so that we're kind of bringing the camera in so it looks like something like this. Now what we're actually doing is because that first clip is moving back, you're basically matching the two speeds. So this is why it's important that when you're filming your clip, that the first clip and the second clip, you're trying to move the camera back roughly at the same rate. So this creates that dolly movement of the two shots lining up as you're panning the camera back. Now what you can do here is with that background clip, you can actually just scale this up to kind of hide any of that edges. So as the camera is basically pulling back, I can basically bring this up here and I can even make these last two say easy ease in. And that's going to create a bit more of a smoother movement. The other thing you can do here is with that clip, because it's moving around in the background, I could just create a position keyframe somewhere around here and just kind of keep that always in the center of screen. So as it's moving across here, what I can do is just shift that across 
so that Alicia always stays in the center of the frame there. Now it's just a matter of kind of getting that timing right. Now you can always, to get that timing, if it's really off, you could right click, go up to the time, enable time remapping. And then if I bring up that time remapping, you could just basically speed that clip by dragging in and out on that endpoint. And that's gonna help basically speed that clip in, you know, make it faster or slower to match the speed of your camera. But basically you're just trying to match the two points here. And when it kind of gets to this point, then the camera's gonna start to basically pan down. Now there's two things happening here. One here, it's got really sharp edges. So we can basically make this uh, by turning these two to have motion blur on, that's gonna make them blurry. So that's gonna help when creating, you know, that, that transition through. And when they get to here, we also want to basically have them kind of just turn off. What I can do is just drag it on the bottom one because we don't need that anymore. With this top one, I'm just gonna come up here and just basically split that layer. And with, this, with the top part, what I want to do is go to that mask and just delete the mask. So that's gonna basically go from having a cutout to no cutout. And as I said, you don't really notice that it disappears because it's moving so fast. Otherwise you could just put some black bars to hide that. Now, a couple other things that I did in my original composition here was I added a bit of a color grade over the top. And the other thing that I also did was add a, basically a black solid. So I just right click, created a new black solid, which kind of went over the top. With that, I kind of just went to the opacity here by hitting T. I created a passive keyframe there at the start, so it was set to zero, and then just added a little bit of, you know, overlay of that black. It just kind of darkens the screen, makes it look a little bit more realistic because it's quite bright. So I just kind of darken that down and kind of shift your attention away from what was going on to, you know, what's going on in the rest of the, the scene. The other thing I also did was created a new adjustment layer. So I just right click new adjustment layer here and I just came up and added the CC lens. You can search for that up here. And I added the Gaussian blur. Now what I did with these is I added, basically I scaled the size all the way up to 500 and created a keyframe just before the camera went through basically the phone screen. I then scaled it back to around 250 and then created another one back at 500. And what that does is it gives that edges a slight distortion effect to make it look like it's going through the phone screen. It just adds another level of detail to it. And it also added a Gaussian blur sort of scaling from zero going up to around four or so here. And then when I play it all together, you pretty much get the finished effect. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you love this video, then you might consider subscribing. You can check out more videos just like this over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.